Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. In the previous episode, we were putting up all the crown on top of our cabinets. We were actually short one piece. So got up with the chickens, went and got a piece and we put that up first thing. And so the crown's all done. Check it off. Yep. And is that all we had left? Pretty much. <laughs> all right, now follow me over here and we'll show you today's project. This existing opening gets a double barn door. Now this is 5-0, five, oh, uh, five foot, zero inches, or 60 inches. And our new opening over here is 5-0. Oh. And you saw us put up these doors. And here's our, pop, here's our barn door slab. Now if you ever put a barn door in an existing opening, the door needs to be wider than the opening. These doors are 30 inches wide and we ordered 32 inch wide slabs for the barn door. Now a slab is simply a door that does not have any mortises for hinges in it and does not drilled for a lock set. That's what you want for a barn door. So our first step, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna remove this casing on the top because we're gonna put a header up here. You can install a barn door without a header. The hardware we have, it's gonna be easier to use a header. So I'm gonna make a cut right here where this pencil line is on both sides. We'll remove the casing and we'll have a 10 foot header all the way across the top. And once it's painted to match this casing, it'll look fine. So let's get that cut. All right, that's done. Now what we're gonna do, take a utility knife, and we're gonna cut through the caulking right here and on the top. Make that piece of casing easier to get off and then we won't tear the drywall paper on the top. All right. Okay, we have our casing removed. Now let's go outside and cut our header. Right, before we attach our header to the wall, we wanted to show you the hardware here. So this is the bolt and the washer that comes with the track and the spacer. And then by the time you're done, you've got less than two inches of bolt sticking out. Now we have to account for a three quarter inch spacer and half inch drywall. So that puts me right at the end of my finger. They're going to be this much into the header over the doors. Not the header we just cut, but the framing header that's inside the wall. That's not enough. So we're going to attach our header so that it's very strong and that this is basically attached to and the weight is supported by our header. So let's go in there and attach it. We have the center line of our header right here. Here's the center line of our opening. They match. So I'm just going to put a couple of 15s in it. Hold it, and now we're going to screw this to the header behind it, and over here we're going to screw it to the studs. So let's get that done. We pre-drilled all our holes with a countersink bit and a pilot bit. And you'll notice there's not a hole down here, but that's because the header is not does not go down that far. We've got four screws over there, four on my side, and these two. Just using three-inch screws to attach it. To the framing and then this is not mdf do not use mdf this is a piece of uh, finger jointed pine so let's finish these off all right that's solid shaking the whole house yep now you can see we've already set up our laser now we knew from the cabinet installation video that the house was sloping towards the street. Not much, but it is. But if you look at the laser, you can tell the difference between here and over on the left. That we're, uh, we're actually a quarter, out, a quarter of an inch and four feet out of level. 
I want the rail to be level. If we follow the board, which is out of level, would the doors roll this way? I don't know, but I'm not willing to take the chance. So this laser line represents the center of our bolt holes. So let's mark those out and install the rail. All right. That's it for the rail. It's secured with eight bolts. Nice. And uh, let's dim the lights a little bit and we'll show them what we did with the laser. So you can see the laser beam is on the, the center of each of those bolts, so our rail is level. The header is tipped towards the street a little bit. In other words, it's lower on the left than on the right. But our doors aren't going to roll on their own. They're going to stay where you put them. And once the doors are up, you'll never see that. That's true. All right, so next step is to attach the hardware to the door and hang them. Let's do it. Let's go. The instructions say that the top hole, the top hole of our hanger is one and nine sixteenths down from the top of the rail. So we have it marked right there. I'm sorry, our style. And then the, uh, our style is four and a half wide and we want to be in the middle of it. So see this little notch right here? That's two and a quarter which is half a four and a half. Put my pencil in there, make a mark. That's what these little notches are for. They're a quarter inch apart. So this is one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and so on. So we can drill these, and we'll mark those and drill them and attach the hardware. Cool. We're using our V drill guide from Big Gator Tools to make sure that our hole is plumb. First, we're going to square this up. Before I drill that hole, so how do we know that this is the top of the door and does it matter? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. You can just hang it however you want and it'll look good. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, this rail is way thinner than this one down here. This one's a lot fatter. Yep. And that's always the bottom, right? Yeah, and the fat side is always the bottom side. And that usually goes for doors, shutters. Yep. Anything. Yep. So we're square. We've got our guide. I'm going to drill that hole out. And we used a piece of plywood underneath to prevent any blowout. So I'm going to drill this one. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and start securing these bolts. All right. Let's Don't get hang about, it. And let's talk about these washers. There is a good side and a bad side to washers. Can you see the difference? Yeah, that side looks finished. Right, because the punch press comes down from this way, and that's the rounded over side, and this side that's kind of sharp is the bottom. So something like this, I pay attention to that. Good side and bad side. <laughs> All right, let's drill this. All right, hey gang, so these work great. Now, this is a 10 foot rail and a five foot opening. So you would think it would be big enough so that the doors would clear. But because of the width of the style and the bumpers, this doesn't go all the way back. So just think about that when you're ordering your own. And what it does for us here, it gives us room to reach this pole that's gonna be right here. So that's cool. All that's left is to route the bottom of the door. We're gonna route it route a groove in here for the track that keeps the door from doing this. And we'll do that on, the, on our next video, right? Right. All right, so let's go on to our next project. Hey gang, it's a couple days later. Today we're gonna to start running trim, casing specifically. Casing is what goes around a door. I've seen it used as baseboard and I've seen it used as crown, but it's for a door. Now what I will typically do is get my square and set it for either a quarter inch or three sixteenths depending on the reveal the reveal is the distance between the side of the jam and the side of the casing it doesn't go like that you want to reveal and like i said i will usually scribe it on there just like that they make little tools for that and that's fine but I don't need to do it because this jam has a built-in reveal. Can you see that? Yeah. 
little That's lip. It. So we're going to run our casing right up to that, just like that, and we're done. Sweet. And you'll also see why a lot of drywallers don't fool with covering these screws because the casing covers them. It just saves them a little bit of time, and that's why. So we have this one cut for the right-hand side. I cut a little scrap with a left and a right-hand miter on it. Get that up here. Get those miters where I want them. And we'll nail this one off. You want to put a nail in there, Jordan? Yeah. All right. And after we nail off the outer edge of the casing, we're going to change to a shorter nail and catch the inside. So let's go out to the saw and cut the left-hand side. All right, that's one one-inch 18-gauge nail in the top to pin the corners together. Now I've done biscuits here. I've got cam clamps. This is pretty simple casing and that looks great. So I'm not going to do that right now. That'll be the advanced class. All right. And then again, we just did one inch nails here into the jam. Once we switch to two inch nails, we'll come back and finish it with a nail here. And one thing about nailing, keep the painter in mind because if you put a nail here, that's going to make it really difficult for the painter to paint and to properly fill and sand it. So put it here where it's flat, here where it's flat. It just makes sense on any type of molding. Think about the poor painter. It's us in this case, but you know what I mean. All right, so our next step, we're going to start running baseboard because we want to put this piece of corner trim that I got where we transitioned from paneling on one wall and we made the turn to drywall. So let's get, let's get set up for baseboard. Look at that. That's sweet. Yep. Now we cut that half a degree past the 45 degree detent on our saw. It just makes an outside corner look fantastic. And why do you do that? Why can't you just cut it at 45? Because these are never 45. I mean, this is never a 90. So if you cut the angle a little bit beyond 45, this will match. Right. Exactly. Just like it's doing right now. Yep. Perfect. Woo. All right, we'll switch to our 2-inch 18-gauge gun. We'll nail it off. Right on the base, inside corners, we're going to cope it. This is MDF, real easy to cope. So the way I write my numbers, this is my measurement, 49 and 11. On the left-hand side of the base is a cope, and on the right is a butt. That's a butt cut, just like that. It's going to go up against a piece of casing. And then on this 8-inch piece, this side's a butt, and that's a cope. So I started with the 8. I've already cut the miter. I'm gonna cope it first. And then I'm gonna cut it to eight because then I don't have to try to hold down a short piece. Okay, I've got the blade so it cuts on the downstroke. I'm gonna go right to this corner. I'm gonna remove this. I'm not perpendicular to the base. I'm cutting back a little bit. Got a half round file. Straighten out that edge. And clean it up where I need to clean it up. So that's the idea. Hmm. Nice. Yep. So it's really going to help us in the foyer where we have all those inside corners because of the mud buildup. It's never a 90. So if I can show you this way. See, even if, if I go past 90 towards an acute angle towards me or past 90 that way towards an obtuse angle, I'm still pretty tight. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. 
Looks nice. So now we'll hook our tape on here and cut this to eight and then do the long one. So I'm using a piece of baseboard for my cut list and it's also a gauge block for me. So check this out. This number right here, 66 and 13 sixteenths with a butt on each end is this piece. It'll butt against the casing on my right and in the corner there. And all I have to do to measure is from here to here, two and one sixteenth. And that's for my little coped piece. So I've got two and one sixteenth with a cope on the right and a butt on the left. So let's go out to the saw, cut all four pieces, and we'll install them with one trip to the saw. Cool. Right there's our piece with the butt on each end. Here's our little coped piece. Perfect. When it squeaks going in, you know you've got it right. Nice. We would never get it that tight with a with a miter. No sir. Did the same on the other side as well. Yep. Beautiful. Looks great. Right here you saw us do it with the coping saw. On this one, we just did it on the chop saw. Three or four degree bevel this way and made that cut. And then finished it with the coping saw right here. Come on, little Jimmy. <laughs> there you go. That'll work. Yep. All right, guys. All of our baseboard is installed and nailed off. Um, we still have to caulk it all and fill the nail holes. <clears throat> we'll do that when we do all the trim, but it looks great. Um, here's our outside corner detail on this. And remember, there's a lot that went on right here. This used to be a load-bearing wall that came across here, and now you can't even tell. And so what we did to account for the existing paneling here and the new drywall, we put up this piece of, I think it's inch and a quarter. They call it inch and a quarter. Uh, that's pine exterior corner and it's nailed on there, nice and strong. The door casing is finished. All the crown is done. So we're gonna start trimming out the windows now. And remember by the corner, I showed you that exterior corner we had drywall and paneling this was all paneling also and when we put drywall now we're past here so when we put our casing up now we've got a gap and we're going to fill that with what's called an extension jam we're going to rip a small piece of wood and it's going to go right in there we were kind of wondering what to use and the company that sent me all the molding sent me a 16 foot piece of window stool. We're gonna change the stool on two of the windows, but we only need eight feet. So we're gonna cut our two stools out of this and on the drop, we're gonna cut our extension, our extension jams. So let's go outside. We're gonna set up the table saw and start cutting extension jams. It even turns off the light. <laughs> hey guys, we're on our last window as far as the casing is concerned. We actually had it already done. And then when we stepped back and looked at it, we could tell that the head casing, the head casing is the one on the top, was pitched down like this by what, over a quarter inch? Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, so much so that, that we could tell. And so we set up our laser on my new tripod, check it out. And the head jam of the window is way out. Out of level. This side is much lower than the left hand side. So we kind of went round and round on how to fix it. And the solution we came up with was to cut a wider extension jam, see how wide this one is compared to the ones on the side? Mm -hmm. The original one was the same width. Right. And then we just held it down so that this is level. It follows our laser line exactly. And it hides the fact that this is out of level. So on the back side of our extension, if you were to reach around Yep. That's a lot that's, closer. That's, the lip is a lot thinner. Yep, that's less than an eighth. Right. 
and you see my whole finger disappears there. Yep. But you won't see that. But your eye will see this, which is nice and level. Yeah, it's hid behind it. Yep. And that's the solution we came up with on this one. And this window had to be perfect because this is the one, I mean, you're going to see this all the time. So that's why we took all the casing off and redid it. So now we've got our casing pre-assembled. And look at that. That's nice. Equal reveal all the way around? Yep, right here. All right, so let's nail that off. Hey gang, so that's gonna wrap up all the casing on the project. You can see how that piece of extension jam is tricking the eye into thinking that this is level. It is level. Well, this is level. Yeah. It's making you think this is level when it's right. really not. And that was a great trick. You may have noticed that we didn't put an apron down here. The piece of casing that you use on the bottom of the stool is called an apron because we decided we're just going to tile up to there like that with our backsplash tile. And that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video. Consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. We're coming up on the tail end of this project, so you won't want to miss out on any of those videos. We appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us, and we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Thanks, guys.